Legends tell of six Toa heroes who fought evil and faded away into history. But legends never die and they shall rise again. Now the Toa have returned to fight evil. United they stand, destined to find the masks of power in order to fulfill their duty to protect the island of Okoto. This is Bionicle Week. Day 3. Onua, the Master of Earth and the Protector of Earth. Hello, this is Sanat here, and welcome back to Bionicle Week. Today we'll be taking a look at Onua, the Master of Earth, and the Protector of Earth. Now the packaging for these two are the similar thing we've been seeing, but they are now Earth-themed for the Earth region of Okoto. Let's see, Skull Spider's green, Golden Mask, really cool shot of Mr. Onua here. He is 108 pieces, our biggest Toa set so far. And the back, you know, is the standard stuff that I'll be showing you. So it's pretty neat. They knock over easily when there's nothing inside of them. Protector of Earth is, you know, 60 pieces. He's got less than the, the last two, I think. Um, overall, pretty neat. Not much else to the boxes, really. They are the boxes. All right, so here we have Toa Onua, the Master of Earth. And I gotta say, out of all three $20 sets, I kind of like this guy... Probably the most, uh, and it's mostly because he is unlike the other five Toa. He is big, stocky. Um, he is really fun because he is a bigger figure. He's a heftier figure than the other two, uh, even though he is shorter. Taking a look at Onua here, um, I must say that his eyes actually light pipe properly. You can see the green through the mask. It's awesome. Uh, he does have a sticker on the chest. These are two stickers, and that is kind of a bummer, but not much else you can do about it. Unless the camera gets really bright trying to focus on this thing that's made of black plastic. Anyways, other than that, he's got nice proportions. He doesn't look, you know, he, he's quite broad-shouldered, but he doesn't look too wide. Other than that, he does have unique feet, which are these clawed feet. And it works really well. He is in the earth. Uh, he's digging around. Um, and because he's digging around, this has built up his upper body so much, and, you know, he's adapted to have clawed feet to, to, to crawl with, um, and it's super cool. So anyways, articulation-wise, he actually has the most head articulation, as he's on a ball joint, and there's an additional, uh, connection here, so he has the ability to look up, down, just all kinds of different movement in his head here. Um, so he can actually just do that and look at his pecs and I don't even know. Um, but he does have quite a great range. Uh, he also does have shoulder movement, um, which is a little tough because the joints are wanting to come with it. And we'll get into that in a second. Elbow here, wrist, hips, knees. Very, very nice knee, I must say. I do like the clear plastic use here. And feet. Really, really cool overall. Now his gold armor is more restrictive than the other two, uh, kind of making him a blend between silver and gold armor Toa, um, and that's, he's got just a couple pieces here and there. But he does have, of course, the gear system, and the gear system allows his arms to move, um, kind of uh, really tightly. Uh, this is a, the tighter connection than Tahu and uh, Kopaka had. Those kind of swing, these, these turn with the gears, it's very nice and tight, um, it holds the pose really well. Um, and the thing is with this guy is that there is a joint up here and that joint is gear connected and then the ball joint It's the only way to get around his massive shoulders All right now for his weapons. There's a little bit of confusion the web animation and the comic uh, That you can see here show Onua having these digging claws first and then forming a hammer but The instructions have him showing a hammer and then the claws so I'm gonna go with the uh, majority here, which is the animations and the comics over the instructions. We're going to give him his claws. So they plug in here. They are the same parts as his shoulders, which is why there's a little bit of asymmetry in his shoulders. Um, but they plug in there. On the back here, you have this part that plugs in here, and this little uh, rod piece that needs to connect to the back of his hand. It hides pretty nicely. That'll work out better. But then we have him with his digging claws, which makes more sense to be his primary weapon. It resembles his original form. And the motion for digging is quite nice, so he can be digging through the tunnels of the Earth region. 
it's pretty neat. I love the throwback to uh, the original uh, Toa Mata Onua having claws. Um, but, of course, it's not all he can do. Uh, removing the claws here, we can go into his secondary weapon mode. Which I'm sure must mean we must power this guy up with his golden mask of power. And now that he's claimed his golden mask of power, we detach this piece back here. And now we just slap these together like this. And plug this on here. Give that to him in his hand. And now Onua has a mighty hammer because he's Thor now. So, unfortunately, his other arm keeps swinging, even when uh, you're wanting to pull off the hammer action. So he's kind of, like, running and hammering. But overall, the hammer looks awesome. I understand why this is the most advertised one in the box. It looks the best out of the two. The claws are neat and work in context, but, uh, you know, the hammer is just a cool visual appeal. So, yeah, I know it's pretty awesome. Alright, so here is the Protector of Earth, who I dare say is more awesome than Onua. Onua is a beast. He's clawing through dirt, just being an awesome guy. The Protector of Earth, he's a little bit more dangerous. This guy chose to put a Gatling gun in his chest. He's like, I don't need to hold a Gatling gun. And then he locked and loaded it into his chest. That is is his now his new existence is to blast things blast rock and rubble away with his new chest cannon and that made him a very interesting build i must say trying to incorporate this into his chest was quite ingenious it gives this guy distinction and it makes him my favorite of the protectors i'm gonna get that right out of the way this is my favorite and i just i love the chest cannon he also is quite articulated in addition to having his uh head on a ball joint He's got shoulders, he's got elbows, he's got wrists. Yes, he has elbows, I did say that right. The protectors from here on out have elbow joints, and that is much appreciated. Hips, knees, and ankles. This means he can get into all kinds of cool poses with his elbows curled and his fists ablaze. He can just start firing his tiny and easy-to-lose bullets out of his chest, which is pretty neat. His mask as well is the same protector mask, it's just now in purple with black. It's really cool. I do think it's awesome. Plus the dude's sporting rocks for shoulders. He gets more awesome though as he has additional weaponry. First of all, he has this thing. Not really sure what to call it. It's kind of just a flail weapon of sorts, but it spins, so that's fun. I don't really know what else to call it. It, it just kind of does that. Um, it's pretty neat. Kind of works like a mace. And then he's given two little pieces that plug on either end of his hand. Unless you drop them, in which case it takes a longer. And he's got a nice little knife to go hacking through skull spiders. This guy is far from defenseless. And out of all the protectors, he's the most heavily armed in just sheer number of things he can do. And I friggin' love him. So, Protector of Earth is cool, Onua is pretty awesome, how's their combination? I must warn you, dear viewer, the awesomeness of combining Onua, the badass Master of Earth, with the friggin' awesome Protector of Earth may be too much for some viewers to handle. This is fair warning, this is gonna get awesome. So here is Power Up Onua. And while you might think this is not the most awesome thing ever, in fact, you only just added three pieces to Onua's armor, and that is true, it makes a lot of improvements. Giving him this flail weapon gives justification for both arms moving when he's in his golden mask form or whatever. He allows you to have two weapons. And this extra shoulder armor actually bulks him up even more, making him look more cool. In addition to that... The Protector of Earth is not defenseless like the other Protectors. I mean, yeah, he made the life decision to have a Gatling gun for a chest. That's not moving. But he gets to keep his little knife, which means he still has melee weapons. This is the perfect combination because it doesn't protect... The, the Protector does not lose anything from combining, giving his armor and weapons to the Toa. They just lose a little bit of armor and one weapon. 
he gets to keep his Gatling gun and his knife, and Onua gets to have justification for two moving shoulders. That is what I gotta say is probably the best of the power-up modes we've seen so far. And these sets are just super cool. Also, they come up Green Skull Spiders. Woo. So overall, Onua, Master of Earth, is quite awesome. He's a big, stocky figure. He makes you feel like that $20 price point really works for him because he is a bigger figure overall. Um, he can actually dual wield his weapon, unlike some of the other Toa. And he's just pretty awesome in everything he does. In addition to that, the Protector of Earth is probably the most badass protector of all of them, and honestly, I recommend both of these guys. If you're only going to get one Protector, get Protector of Earth. He's just cool. Plus, when you have Onua, you can combine the two, and Protector of Earth really loses nothing. It's a fantastic set of figures right here, and I honestly recommend both of them as being early pickups for this line, because they are great. So overall, I definitely recommend these two. I think they're some of my favorites of the line so far. But we are not done yet. We are not even halfway done. We still have three more Toa. Next time, we'll take a look at the Master of Water and the Protector of Water. Until then, be sure to check out HeroTaku.com for all your LEGO news and more. Until next time, Sansang. Goodbye.